why am I doing this? If it's because you've got the big vision and you're excited about it and it drives you to want to work on weekends and want to work evenings and want to push and push and push, I'd say you should be doing that thing, you know? Like, don't hold yourself back, you know, risk it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Awesoming's podcast, where we highlight people pursuing their definition of, you guessed it, awesome. So buckle up and get ready for some more success story adventures and failures from Kentucky's tech and entrepreneur community. Hey, y'all, welcome back to this episode of the Awesoming Podcast. I'm sitting across the table from someone who knew me when I was a wee little lad, Jason Mize. He was a former Apex software employee here. We, we go way back to when I was first getting started around the Austin Mink team. And uh, Jason, you have you've quite, quite, a, quite a background. And I, I want to talk about it because you are someone who has left some of the working world, done a lot of stuff. You went through the Austin Mink boot camp, Austin Mink U boot camp. You then worked for Apex and you've, you've bounced around to a handful of software companies learning very, various skill sets. And uh, somebody on our team paid you a very sincere compliment this morning when I was asking about you saying, Jason's the kind of guy that doesn't let anything stop him. So if, if someone says, hey, we need this, we need to learn this skill set or something in this stack, you'll just say, hey, I'll do it. That was a really cool trait here. That's... I mean, I guess our, your former colleagues, I don't know if that's oh, the right term. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then them to say that for you. So uh, that's, that's high praise. That's really nice. Yeah. Well, hey, you deserve it. That's hey, all I'll say. Garrett, I was, uh, thanks for having me on here, man. Um, it's been fun seeing how you've like grown from just entering the company to like taking it all over here. You're in charge of everything, everything around here. Yeah, you hear That's that, Brian? Awesome. Jason saying I'm taking everything over. <laughs> yep. It says so. now. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, Jason, let's, uh, I'll set, I'll set the stage here for you and then, uh, we'll, we'll dive in. So again, just mentioned that you've got a wide background. You've, you've, you run your company, Stellar, Stellar TechWorks. Stellar TechWorks. And what we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that quite a bit. But you've also gone from restaurant, uh, coming in a coffee shop, a handful of things, to then going through a coding boot camp to hone in your skill set, to then working at a handful of companies. Literally just said all of that um, <laughs> before, which is fine. But would you mind sharing a bit of, of your background? Because again, you went from studying music, I believe at Tennessee Tech, oh, yeah. to working in a slew of, of areas as, as a GM, coming in a coffee shop. Talk about some of, the, some of what you've done that has led you to where you currently are just maybe yeah. some of the, the narrative that goes a layer deeper. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I, uh, I run stellar tech works. Uh, the, uh, stellar tech works is me. Um, and my best friend, Sherman Adelson, we've been friends from, uh, seventh grade, eighth grade, right on. way back, way, way back. Um, and he's, both best friend and also like one of the smartest people I know. So it's been, I jumped on that really early and we started a company, Stellar Tech Works back in 2005. 2005. Yeah. 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 And it hasn't been a full-time thing through all those years, but it was from 2005 until, geez, I can't even count 2011, 12, something like that. Okay. When it was a game development company. And we were making a strategy game, uh, Tales from the Strange Universe, built that from start to completion, ran a successful Kickstarter, did the things. And that was really fun. Uh, It was an online web game. Uh, I was really focused a lot on the design, the graphics. I did all the graphics. I did, um, you know, just community building aspects. Went to a whole bunch of game conventions, traveled around, got involved with... um, Run Jump Dev, shout out to Run Jump Dev, best gaming organization in the world, local thing in Lexington here. Um, it was just a really good time in life. And then we kind of split that up and I started a coffee house with my wife. Um, we ran that for a few years, which was really fun. And I decided to get back into the programming world and did the boot camp. Awesome Inc. Boot Camp. The very first one. The very first one. So you, was, you were the guinea pig that we didn't mess up on. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I still salivate when I hear a bell, but <laughs> but they um yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick, Nick Such and 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 Matt Smith, they uh they started that very first one and ran it 
it's a little crew of us, like 10 of us. I'm still friends with a whole bunch of former boot campers. Um, it was just a, a crazy experience. Wildly, uh, I, I think about it in terms of, it's similar to like um, getting dropped in the middle of Argentina and you don't speak Spanish. And it's immersive learning. You, you'll go from not speaking Spanish to, you know, being able to find your way around and find the bathrooms and order food and stuff like that in days. <laughs> because otherwise, no bathrooms, no food. You're really motivated. The boot camp was very much like that for me. Like it was a, had a little bit of money after selling the cough shop, but it's not going to go forever. We're going to do this and it's all in. And just living and breathing um, coding was really great. Uh, scary, terrifying, totally immersive, came out the other side. Um, I'd recommend it to anybody. Um, boy, that conversation didn't start there. Let's see. You were asking about like, no, you, you're good. That, that was, that was super organic. I, I loved all that. Yeah. The, um, m music, I I'm definitely a musician studied music back in, um, in college. I've got a band around town, uh, the mini splendid things. You can look them up on Spotify. Good stuff. I think, <laughs> um, I still do that. That's free time. Jason in my copious free time. Um, I like to read. I like to paint. I do a lot of watercoloring, stuff like that, but primary entrepreneurship. Yeah, no, that's, that's right on. And I, I think one of the things that's really enjoyable in any conversation like this, Jason, is you hear people who have, most people have done a lot of things and we, we talk about this at Awesome Inc. We have something called the luck service area. You try a lot of things, you realize not for me. You try something else. Hey, I like this. Let me put more time and effort to it. Yeah. You meet people around that thing and you know you grow your community, you grow your luck. And so it's cool for for me to hear that you started out in the game developer world. Yeah. Uh, you know, friends with John John Meister had him as a oh, professor yes. in college. He's great. The run jump dev crew. Uh, we we love what they do. For and for you to say it was in this world, stepped away from it, tried something with my family, you were GM at a restaurant, totally different sector, then to say, Hey, I missed what I was doing previously. Absolutely. How can I go back and, and accelerate my growth? Yeah. You know, in, in the boot camp. What do you, what do you think, and this is something I like, like to ask our boot campers, what do you think made it well worthwhile making that plunge, making that jump into trying it? It was the, uh, it's that immersion. Okay. I, I, basically it's, you can, in theory, take three months off of work, watch a whole bunch of videos and get on Udemy and take a course and do all the same things that we did in the boot camp, And you can do that round the clock and you can really push yourself hard, but there's a difference between um, being able to, every time you hit a stumbling block, have Matt Smith say, oh, it's doing it like that because of this. <laughs> and, and what would have taken me nine months off of work stumbling through Udemy courses mm -hmm. was that three months. And it, it was just a highly effective use of my time. <laughs> yeah, th that's, that's a great way to say that. And I uh, probably sound like a broken record because I say some of the same things many times on this show, but I, I got a CS degree in college and you know, oh, yeah. what, I, what I learned in four years, I'm watching people do at a much quicker rate, thankful that I had a scholarship to pay for school. So it didn't cost me nearly as much as I could have. Um, so I completely understand the, the acceleration that the fast pace, the immersion is so valuable. I've had the uh, pleasure of working in a in a number of different companies that hired um, college graduates straight out of college, okay. and then also hired some boot campers. So I've gotten to work hands on in both those situations, and they're they're different. Mm -hmm. You know, they each have strengths in totally different areas. I would say so, but they seem to balance out really nicely where like they, they both have strengths in different areas and weaknesses in different areas, but they're in general, both really useful hires. I, if anybody's thinking about hiring a boot camp grad out there, it's not a bad call. I'll, I'll make sure that's the first part of this. Episode. <laughs> <laughs> so again, yeah, you were, you're in the boot camp. Um, glad to hear some of your takeaways. You said you're so close with, with your cohort. That's a really, I think a really admirable trait because when you're with yeah. people on teams or groups for an extended period of time, you went through that experience. You're oh. always, you can always pick back up where you left off and re recall Absolutely. that thing. Absolutely. 
we've been in the trenches. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you said a few few of your your uh, your cohort mates all are now entrepreneurs, which is a really cool thing. You yeah. learn a new skill set, then you you apply it and do something else. Absolutely. And one of the things I um, I think is really cool is after you went through the boot camp, I know that you stuck around the Austin Mink space a little bit, and you you taught some of our our coding clubs, some yeah. of our programs where you got to go from being a student to being Mr. Miyagi, you know, being, <laughs> being a teacher. And then, and then from there, then you became a part of APAC software. And, uh, I, it, it was actually a little bit of overlap there where, okay. uh, right out of the boot camp, APAC hired me to be a, a, a programmer for them, um, which was brilliant. Uh, they're an amazing company full of just chock full of talent and experts. And I got to rub elbows with those people every day. And on the, other side of that, in the mornings, uh, Nick Such and the university program were paying me to come in and kind of mentor uh, the the new boot camps as they came through. Uh, just kind of, I would work puzzles with them, talk about language basics, the really simple stuff so that the teacher, when he came in an hour after me, didn't have to go over the, you know, here's where you put your semicolon. Mm-hmm. He could do like theory and deeper application stuff. Um that was a, an amazing time because I was getting experience with Apex, learning new things, and getting the experts there to show me how they do things. And then I was also every morning kind of reiterating over the basics, mentoring other people. And that was, that was a nice learning time for me. <laughs> no, that, that's super cool. I, I think that that is probably one of the more valuable aspects is to see – um, and you can't see it, Jason. Jason's mic stand keeps something keeps falling over on his boom arm, so it's kind of silly. Oh, it's hilarious. Um, but it is cool to see that for the boot camp. I feel like every maybe every second or third cohort, yeah, someone then comes back and they teach the the morning session that yeah. you used to teach. And so it's cool to see that that cyclical function. Oh, at, former students are now now being part of the teaching at, teaching staff. At this point, I think like Josh Stewart's taking over as the head instructor. Yeah, but I'm mentored him <laughs> in the boot camp that he came through just like one or two right after me. Mm-hmm. I just amazing. So Josh, you hear that your your former teacher is giving, <laughs> you're the reason that you're in the position That's right. you are. <laughs> I, I can I can take credit for that. That's you're welcome, Josh. You're welcome. So tell me <laughs> tell, tell me this. So after you again navigated from from boot camp, from teaching, all the while you still have stellar stellar tech works. Yeah. And then you also bounce around from a few companies. I report source, which was a fellowship company out of Northern Kentucky. Yeah. Um L- Lucid app is that how you pronounce it? It is okay, cool. And then uh, Computer Services Inc. with with John Williams mm-hmm. out of uh, Paducah, which is he's a Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Famer. Can you talk about some of the like maybe the major takeaways that you've you've learned at each stage of working with a new company? Of oh, I had no I- idea how to do this, so I, le- I oh, really yeah. developed a figured out mentality. Or gosh, going from a startup to a you know a C suite company, learned a whole a whole bunch more. I mean. When I was at Apex, I got to get my hands in a whole lot of uh, what I kind of consider smaller projects, but you're talking about something that you're going to be working on for six or eight months. Small-ish projects, they're big. They're not a website, but they're something that you can see the end of Mm -hmm. pretty pretty well. Um, When I left Apex, I went to work for iReportSource, and they're a lovely little startup up in Cincinnati. Uh, Christy Brown started them. Um, and that was really educational in that it was a totally different um, frameworks and languages than what I had been using at Apex. So Apex was, not to get too technical, but it was a lot of uh, Python and Django and a little bit of React on top. And uh, iReportSource had uh, was the team was run by uh, Jason and Roll, who's just bright as he can be. I learned so much from that guy. Um, and it was React Native. It was a mobile app instead of a web app. Um, it really ignited my love of working on mobile apps. Um, React Native, especially at that point, was a super new, cutting edge, uh, fresh out of the stable kind of thing that nobody knew how to do right. <laughs> and so it was fun getting to see those really early stages, kind of almost pre-documentation stages of figuring out how to do mobile development with React Native and things like that, which is still one of my favorite things to work in. Um, went from there over to LucidApp. And that I tell you, the 
thing I really took away from both Lucid and I Report Source was that they're two, they were both new startups and their founders, MJ and uh, Christy individually, they both just really had that entrepreneur vision where they were they were hungry. They were ambitious. They had big views about what they wanted to accomplish and what they wanted to accomplish involved like educating the world and organizing the world and saving the world. And they used big terms when they were doing this. And I, I really got a lot of uh, drive and joy out of listening to them talk and it. And, 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 and that's a lot of what I enjoy about my work in, um, in, at Stellar is that the clients Usually most of our clients, they're either like totally startup or, uh, you know, five or six years, you know, under 25 or so employees, they're companies, they're local things. Um, but they've still got that, that kind of drive and vision in a way that you don't get the excitement of with, uh, some larger places, I, which, I, and then I went from there over to, uh, computer services, which, was educational in a whole nother way because this is a company that's been around for 50 years. They're financial software. They're super stable. And you've got this kind of polar opposites where with a startup, all the programming and development and project development is all get it out the door as quick as possible. You just got to get it done, get it made, we can fix it later, but you got to get it in front of people as quickly as possible so you can start iterating because you've always got that runway. That runway is always burning. Um, and a lot of it's burning paying your developers, so you want them to produce. <laughs> um, and then you go to uh, computer services, and the goal is different. They've got a working product. What they're trying to do is iterate on it, improve it, bring new features to bear, maybe start new aspects where they can sell new things to different parts of previously unexplored territory. But it's slow and it's stable. They're cautious about releases. They put everything through like a two-week testing and you build tests and you have time for like kind of in-depth robustness that startups don't always have. And I I, I had that experience over at... um at computer services. My friend Sherman, my uh, partner at Stellar, had that at Kroger when he worked for them. Large companies that really need things to not break. Um, And seeing what that level of robust approach to development looks like has really helped me when I'm working with the startup clients that we have, not paying ourselves into a corner. (laughs) We've got to get it done. We've got to get it done fast. We don't necessarily have time for all the uh, robust things that are going to make it really powerful later on, but we know where to leave room for those. We know where to build the space for that. Here's where that's going to go. Here's what it's going to look like when we get there. That's the, that was my big takeaway from that period of kind of moving around different companies. During all of that, we were uh, stellar, definitely, became more of a uh, weekend sideline gig. Okay. But it was ongoing. I was uh, largely doing work for uh, uh, different, there was maybe three or four different uh, software houses between here and uh, a little bit in Western Kentucky and uh, uh, some people in Frankfurt that they would get a client or something that was in a framework that they didn't support their developers on staff didn't know how to do. And somehow my name would get to them largely, usually through networking people that I had worked with who recommended me. Um, They'd be like, Hey, can we pay you to do 10 hours a week, 20 hours a week and build this thing that we don't know how to build. And whether I knew how to build it or not, the answer was always, yeah, totally. And then I would learn how to I'm do the it. Guy. <laughs> and then I would learn how to do it. Sherman would help me. Um, and we would make it make it happen. And then a few years ago, uh, we those kind of turned into word of mouth and we 
we uh, made a connection with a larger client and went full full time back into it. I think one of the things that's really special about your story is you you guys never it never seems like you completely shelved Stellar, mm. and that was always ongoing. And hey, you know we we can come back to this later. And and where I want the rest of this conversation to go for the next you know handful of minutes is that's probably not a an easy thing that people do. And B, I'd love to to hear. With everything you've gained over the last fifteen years, yeah, how has Stellar changed from focusing game. On, the, on the game world and you guys did the the wire the wireframes the prototyping all that to yeah. what what does Stellar do now since you're all you're both full time and yeah. and your, your buddy Sherman who also went and worked for you know a big company like Kroger yeah you, you both came back from maybe being a little a little wet behind the ears to saying oh actually now we we have a, a clear but vision that, of what we want that's. <laughs> you you really summed it up is that it's 15 years of of just banging my head against different pro- problems and all of that gives you experience so i've had to do um i've had to do design work we've found people that do good design work we found uh, a slew of people that we can hire as uh, contractors to kind of when we swell up and need a new client, we've got more hours. We, you know, I've made contacts with all these different people. We've worked in, um, you know, everything from uh, being a manager at the restaurant uh, gave me the skills to run a team, <laughs> to schedule and keep a team paid and plan out budgets, things like that, uh, to working on different size projects from little three or four month affairs to big, massive, large team projects that take years and years to develop. Um, I've just gotten to see a whole lot of everything at this point. Like I, I've worked in a, a whole lot of different environments, a whole lot of different size projects for different people. And it's just been a whole lot of learning uh, you, and a- a unbelievable amount of learning. <laughs> yeah, w- w- which is a good thing. You know, I, it's probably, you know, a quote by unknown, you know, who has many of those, but once, once you stop learning, you're, you're screwed essentially. It's like, w- once you think you've accomplished all, you know, everything you're, you're wrong. I mean, I, the more I know, the more I learn, the realize there is so much more that I don't know. And yeah. Yeah. And that also keeps me hungry. So it's a one or more. Uh, yeah. Jace, uh, w- what has been maybe one of your, your biggest successes over the last you know, last 15 years as a developer and as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Maybe what's one of your, your, you know, your biggest blunders or the, the biggest egg on my face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you don't mind sharing. So going way, way back, even before Stellar Tech Works was um, a game development company, we spent a very short amount of time, maybe a, maybe nine months, something like that. Um, Similar to the way our, we are now, where we were we were considering ourselves a software house, where we were going to develop specifically small scale projects. At that point, we we're like we're going to we're going to do nothing but WordPress sites. We're going to target very small businesses around around here. Uh, we did a whole bunch of websites for like local artists, and it's like my. A, a big epiphany that I had somewhere along the way is that what, what did they say? You can have uh, like one of three things when you hire somebody. You can have you know quality, or speed, or uh, cheapness. You know, like it can be cost effective, or you can get it fast, or you can get it really high quality. But you can almost never get two of them. You usually get one if you're lucky. <laughs> and back then, what we were going for was cheap and fast and small scale projects, but it turned out that we weren't good at turning off the quality and we lost. So our dollar to hour ratio was so bad and just because we couldn't stop delivering, (laughs) you know, like we were making these handcrafted artisanal websites for people and having to charge them, you know, a a few thousand dollars for WordPress out of the box site rates. It was a terrible business model. Terrible. And we we were like, this is this is atrocious. You want to make a game? Let's make a game. <laughs> and we went a different direction. But when we came back around to wanting to become a full, full-on software house, 
uh, making products for clients, I, I really decided to lean into the fact that by nature, Sherman and I are the quality <laughs> approach. Like we just can't be happy if we're not trying to make it really, really good. And that's a different clientele that you chase. You chase the people who want, who, who find that to be the most important aspect of what they're looking for in a company. And, and, and that that's my biggest learning curve takeaway. Once I figured out what I like to deliver and started looking for the clients who are looking for that, it all started working so much better. <laughs> the clients are happier. We're making money. It's been revolutionary. And if I could go back and smack 25 year old me upside the head, I'd say, God, look at what you like to do. Find those people and get them to pay you for it. <laughs> you know? That was a nugget right there. Wow. That's so good. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't have too much more to, to ask because I feel like you have answered it pretty organically. I mean, I think a few things, one I'd like to know is what's, what's maybe like one of your best pieces of advice you'd give to an entrepreneur that is either struggling or maybe even someone that, you know, they are 99% convinced they should be an entre entrepreneur, but that 1% is still holding them back. What would you say to them? <laughs> the people that I know who are entrepreneurs, they don't, they don't do it because they have an option not to. <laughs> They're never going to be happy, completely happy working for someone else. And I've worked for other people and it's not been bad. I've learned so much working for other people and those have been great experiences for me, but I've always come back around to just enjoying getting to make decisions, getting to make uh, uh, major impacts in the way that I want to, um, getting to, I've got a relatively high risk tolerance. I think you have to have that if you're an entrepreneur. Um, but if you're thinking about getting into starting your own company, I think that's your question. Why am I doing this? If it's because you've got the big vision and you're excited about it and it drives you to want to work on weekends and want to work evenings and want to push and push and push. I'd say you should be doing that thing, you know, like don't hold yourself back, you know, risk it. You'll never be happy not risking it. That's awesome. Jason, last, last question. Where can people find, find you either in the community online and how, how can they support Stellar? Absolutely. Uh, StellarTechWorks.com. Uh, we're out there. We're always looking for our next uh, exciting client that we can, uh, we can work with and build things for. That's great. Well, Jason, hey, it has been, it's been a treat getting to see your face, getting Likewise, to, getting to hang out Likewise. with you. Um, I think actually one last question off the cuff. Yeah. What, what instrument is your best? <laughs> I know you're, you're multi-talented. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I, I played just a little bit of everything, uh, the, like piano, guitar, bass, drums, I sing, but I'd, I'd say guitar, guitar is probably my thing. Um, I, in, in my band, we all kind of swap instruments around and stuff like that, but the guitar is the one that's kind of mine. I love that. Well, actually very last thing that we'll, yeah. we'll, hit, we'll hit end. Uh, when's your guys next show? So, so listeners uh, can come out and support you. We have not been playing out. We've been locking ourselves up in the studio uh, recording our next album even better even better which i am so excited about this one's gonna be we're doing some cool stuff on this album um i think it'll be coming out probably first part of next year okay is the goal january we've, 1st we've got maybe another <laughs> january 1st absolutely you heard <laughs> garrett promise it here it's gonna happen um <laughs> yeah um we're we're doing some exciting new stuff on it, and I'm 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 psyched to to get it out the door. It's got another song or two to record, and then we've got to do a whole bunch of mixing. So I can't wait to hear it. So Jason, yeah, again, you've done everything in life. You're a musician, you're an entrepreneur, you're a developer. What can't you do? You, I'm not not surprised. So again, thanks for your time today. Good seeing you, and I can't wait to hear about Stellar and your band here in the upcoming weeks. It was a pleasure. Thanks, you. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Awesomeings Podcast. 
And another quick thank you to Lee Rosevere and a few members from our community who provide the music that you hear in this show. Lastly, give us a follow on Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz, or even better, come on down to our space. Come be a part of our community and get plugged in and let's start something awesome together. You guys rock. We'll see you next time.